So what is our modern definition of a robot? Well, a robot is a system of sensors, manipulators, control systems, power supplies, software, which act together to do a task. It's kind of long and wordy, isn't it? Really, what a robot is is a mechanical device that performs a task. In modern times, it's more of a digital or electronic device combined with a mechanical device, but it does a job that seems repetitive or one that might be really dangerous. Essentially, it does jobs that humans can't or don't want to do. In fact, the first digitally programmable robot was bought by GM, used to remove hot metal from a die-cast machine and then stack it. It was given the name Unimate. Your drone is a robot, which acts as a personal aerial photographer. Opie here is a robot, a humanoid remote-controlled vehicle that senses and talks. So how is Eric a robot? Well, Eric's a sort of a complicated marionette puppet. There are no strings on me. Yeah, that's right, Eric. You're kind of like Pinocchio. The first and most important part of a robot is the actuator. It's really the machine's muscle. You can usually hear it actuate every time a robot moves. Think about the sound of Robocop. That pneumatic sound, every time he moves and walks. Look at Opie and listen to him every time he moves. You'll hear that actuator engage. For a puppet with strings, the puppeteer's hand, or the muscles in his hand, are actually the actuators. This is a flying crank ghost, a mechanical marionette puppet. Like our other puppet, it operates with a crossbar and strings. It's just that the hands aren't the actuators. The actuator is actually a gear motor that travels at a constant speed. For an advanced robotic puppet like Eric, the actuators are in the form of servos. This is a servo motor. The actuator that operates Eric's head movements, his jaws, his eyes, it is the muscle that operates in precise position control in a closed loop system. So what is a closed loop system? A closed loop system is a system that has feedback. Let's take for example the robot that you call a clothes dryer. The dryer has a beginning or starting point, sometimes called a set point. The input is wet clothes. The controller is the knob that allows you to set the time. The process is the process of drying your clothes. If you set the timer to 30 minutes, it will dry for 30 minutes, regardless of whether the clothes are dry or not. If it takes too long, you've wasted energy. If it's too short, then your clothes will still come out wet. This is an open system. There is no feedback. Now let's say we set your dryer's timer to automatic. Again, we start at a set point of zero. We input our wet clothes. We turn the controller to automatic. The process begins. Somewhere in this, there's feedback, a feedback loop that includes a sensor. It senses that the clothes are still wet. So it goes back and it tells the controller, let's spend a little longer. Goes through the process again, still senses the clothes are too wet. It continues to dry until the point where in the feedback loop, the sensor senses that your clothes are dry. Then it tells the controller it's time to stop. In this case, your clothes take exactly the amount of time they need to dry. It doesn't take too long. It doesn't leave you with wet clothes. The feedback feeds the sensor and it tells the dryer when to shut off. With open and closed systems explained, let's get back to the servo. The servo works through a process called pulse width modulation. We send a pulse of electricity to the servo and control the amount of time the pulse is at a high voltage compared to the amount of time it is at a low voltage. Looking at the graph with voltage on the x-axis and time on the y-axis, we see that the pulse is at a high voltage for about 3 milliseconds. This is a pulse width. At the low voltage, it is about 0.5 milliseconds. The longer the high voltage pulse, 
the greater the movement in the servo. In order to see how this process works, we have disassembled the servo. If you look at the servo, you can see we had three wires. The red is for power, the black is for ground, and the yellow is a signal. The signal is what makes the closed system. It sends the pulse. Most hobby servos, like this one, only travel 180 degrees. So the shortest pulse would go to zero and the longest would go to 180. Varying pulses will move the servo on varying degrees, somewhere between zero and 180. If you look at the disassembled servo, you'll see that there's a gear motor and a potentiometer. The potentiometer is really a variable resistor. The potentiometer has both power and ground going through a voltage regulator. The power supplied is about 5 volts and the signal goes to the resistance portion of the potentiometer. Attached to the potentiometer is a small gear at the top. This is attached to an arm or wheel on the servo. So let's say I start at 0 degrees, which is a pulse width at low voltage for a long time. And I'm currently at 180 degrees. And I want to be at 90 degrees. So I use the resistance value to give me a pulse, a pulse somewhere between the pulse required to give me 180 degrees and the pulse required to give me 0 degrees. However, our pulse is never quite perfect. And the arm will begin to jump up and down, up and down, looking for the precise location. In order to prevent that from happening, we provide it with something called a dead band. The dead band is simply giving us an acceptable error. A point where it doesn't matter if it's plus or minus by a tiny amount. It's kind of like arguing with Eric. You just say never mind or I don't care after a certain point. That's a lie. No, it's not. Yes, it is. No, it's yes, not. Yes, it is. No, it's not. Okay, have it your way. I knew I was right. But we still have another problem. When we use a servo, we're constantly changing directions. So we have to have a way to tell our pulse to change directions. And we do that by using something called an H-bridge. The H-bridge is an electric circuit that switches the polarity of the voltage. When the polarity is switched, the servo arm switches from traveling counterclockwise to clockwise, or clockwise to counterclockwise. This is a partially disassembled servo, with the guard over the gear having been removed so that you can see the gear directly connected to the gear motor as it moves when we apply a power source to it. You can see how fast it moves, and the pulse width modulation actually controls that speed. That is what it's there to control. However, what we need really isn't speed. What we need is force. And that force comes in the form of torque. Torque is the rotational equivalent to linear force. We need to maximize the torque, and we're going to do that by sacrificing speed. So let's disassemble another servo. So you can see that you begin with this small gear right here. This small gear is attached to a much larger gear. This much larger gear slows the speed down and increases the torque. This larger gear is attached to a small gear here which is attached to a much larger gear here. Again, slowing down the speed and increasing the torque. But how do we get the servo to do exactly what we want? I mean, sure we have a circuit board and a potentiometer controlling resistance and giving feedback to the pulse width modulation, and we have an H-bridge to control the direction of the pulse, and we have a dead band to keep the servo from searching. But how do we let the servo know exactly what we want it to do? How do we get Eric to speak words, sentences, lectures, and even call me an idiot? Well, to do that, we need a servo controller and the software to be able to operate it. In order to control the servo, we need a circuit, an electrical path controlling the servo's motion. The circuit we'll use in this case is the Link Motion SSC 32U solid state circuit that controls 32 servos and is a USB circuit from the robot shop. 
This controller is a dedicated RC radio control servo controller with an extremely fine adjustment of one microsecond resolution for accurate and smooth positioning and movement. The SSC32U controls 32 servos through the use of a really amazing device. That device is the Atmel ATmega328P microcontroller. The microcontroller is a really amazing device costing maybe about 50 cents that is essentially the microprocessor for a circuit board. But unlike a computer's microprocessor, this microprocessor has only one purpose, to rotate the servo. Okay, so we see that we have a microcontroller on a circuit board capable of controlling all of our servos. But where does the microcontroller get its information? How does it know what you want? How does it know what you want the servos to do? How does it know how wide to open Eric's mouth, when to tilt his head or rotate his eyes? Well, that information comes from you and your software. You use the software to make a file or program to communicate your commands to the microcontroller on the servo control board. Now, this software or this file using the software can be on board. It can be built into your robot or it can be hooked directly through your computer. Since our SSC32U is connected directly to our computer's USB, we will be using the Visual Show automation software widely used in the animatronic industry. Now the first thing we're going to do is go to the Tools section. And there we're going to go to Settings and we're going to set a port for each one of those servos. Uh, they're in a 0, 1, and 2 position. Then I'm going to assign a color to each one so it's easy for us to keep track of them. If I press on this, I'm starting at position 127 and stopping at position 127. Well, I don't want to do that. Maybe I want the head to turn to the right. So I'll turn that and then for the stop position I'll capture that. So now, when I hit execute, that servo is going to start go from the 127 to the position I just set it to. And it's going to do it slowly. If I wanted to make this go faster, let's say I use this tool. This is a really great tool. Where I mirror and repeat. That means it's going to start where it stopped and then start again. So, if you look, now I'm going from 90 to, to 167, start position 34, stop position 127. If you look here, start position was 127, stop position was 134. I'm just going the opposite direction. And now if I play that, you see it turns slowly in one direction and then back in the other direction. <clears throat> That's really useful when I do the mouth. Let's say this is the mouth. And if I wanted to keep having the mouth open and close, all I'll do is have to go back and repeat this mirror over and over again. Let's recap. You give your specs to the software. The software sends the data to the SSC32U. The SSC32U relays the information to all of the individual servos. The servos use feedback, a potentiometer, and an H-bridge to influence the pulse width modulation that controls the speed of the servo motor that is converted into torque with the use of a dead man to precisely move the servo arm. And that, in a nutshell, is an intro to robotics and animatronics.